Bouquets and backslapping in the air-conditioned bubble of the summit in the desert. For European leaders, all fighting off populist challenges at home, triggered by the migration crisis, this meeting was above all about one issue. I want to acknowledge and salute all those here who have shouldered the burden of population displacement, helped refugees and acted early to tackle people smuggling. Put simply, the EU are paying North African countries, above all Libya, a nation in chaos without a functioning government, to catch the migrants and keep them. In the past, NGO ships like this one would rescue drowning migrants and transport them to Europe, where they were welcomed until the political climate changed. The populist government in Italy has refused to let these rescue ships dock. The new policy is to fund the Libyan Coast Guard with ships and training to fish the migrants and refugees out of the sea and send them back to Libya. It has worked. The Libyan route has been virtually shut down, but at a terrible human cost, in which European leaders with their domestic concerns are complicit. No more suffering. No more suffering. No more suffering. These are mainly Eritreans, arms crossed, symbolizing a demand for freedom. They once dreamt of safety in Europe, but instead they've ended up detained in Libya, caught up in a nightmare the world is unaware of and Europe has turned a blind eye to. They're all locked in together. They don't see sunlight. Um, people are fed maybe once a day, just rice or pasta. Journalist Sally Hayden has been tracking abuses in Libya's secretive migrant detention camps for months. I mean, the conditions are horrific. People drinking toilet water to survive a lot of sickness, a lot of tuberculosis particularly. But even now, like in one detention centre I'm in touch with, people have gone a month without tuberculosis medication. Sally's received dozens of desperate audio and video messages from behind the walls, verified by human rights organisations. I am from Eritrea. I am the mother of twins. They are very in... We need freedom. There are 500 people, 120 are from them, women and 20 are children. We are suffering too much. We have no water, no food. Pretty much everybody in the detention centres now has tried to get to Europe and been caught by the Coast Guard and been sent back to Libya. It gets worse. The migrants and refugees become human commodity. This is the detention centre in the town of Kums, just east of Tripoli, the beginning of a chilling crime. These Eritrean men are furious after discovering that some of their friends were sold back to the people traffickers by the guards. Things are so tense that the Libyans guarding them use live ammunition to control the crowd. Despite these protests, the traffickers came back and many of the men pictured here were later taken away. The UN confirmed that people had indeed gone missing from the Qums detention centre and it expressed concern for their well-being. That concern is not misplaced, as these horrific images apparently demonstrate. Migrants sold back to the trafficking gangs are often tortured on camera. A gun pointed at his head, he's being burned with molten plastic. Or these men being whipped and beaten. Women are not exempt. The videos are posted on social media, emojis included. They demand the victims' families crowdsource ransom payments to keep their relatives alive. Call it the Abu Ghraib of the migrant crisis. I have come across really traumatized um, clients, teenagers who have been uh, detained in Libya for two, three years, pushed back at sea. London-based immigration lawyers have been gathering evidence of the yes. torture extortion racket. Um, they were tortured on the phone while the traffickers will call their mom or their dad. They will torture them to scream and um, the, the parents will be told they had to pay huge sums of money to save them. I have seen here clients covered with scars, uh, completely traumatized. We have got medical reports about the effects of what they went through in Libya. 
Graffiti on the walls of Libyan detention centers spells out the despair. Whoever comes into this house, may God help you, says this message. Three people sold to smugglers on the 7th of December 2018. And simply, Libya is a market for human beings. Current EU policies seem designed to curb migration by funding and training the Libyan Coast Guard, while doing little to monitor the conditions in the camps. The situation is definitely being used by the Europeans because it suits their objective. The number one priority for European governments is to stop refugees and migrants from crossing the Mediterranean and arrive in, in Europe then they are not actually acting to stop the human rights violations in Libya. Channel 4 News contacted the European Commission with our findings. They said our priority in Libya has always been saving lives, protecting people, fighting trafficking and smuggling and supporting the vulnerable. That's on paper. That's the official line at the summit where Arab leaders have been raising the price for dealing with Europe's migration problem. Yet the human cost is measured not in euros, but in broken lives. Matt Fry reporting. Well, joining us now from New York is the Portuguese Socialist Member of the European Parliament and former diplomat, Ana Maria Gomes. Ms. Gomes, we have seen these shattering images from Libya, and one wonders whether the price paid by the European Union can possibly justify tolerating these terrible conditions in Libya. Not at all. This is horrific, but it's no surprise. Um, it's it's uh, it, and it's tremendous the callousness, the the hypocrisy, the cynicism of those in the European Union, um, in the European Commission, but as well among in the European Council or governments, including the British government, that are pretending that they are saving lives, where they know very well that in Libya there is no such thing as the Libyan Coast Guard. What there are are militias, militias infiltrated by all sorts of criminals, uh, networks, and including terrorist groups. They are the ones who have been paid by the EU to pretend that they are a fictional uh, Libyan Coast Guard to indeed push back the, the migrants. They are the ones who explore the migrants, who sell the migrants. This is nothing new. This already existed in the days of Gaddafi. Uh, but of course now, uh, the, what is tremendous is the complicity of the EU. Uh, EU governments go after this uh, fascist regime in, uh, government in Italy of Salvini, who there is no uh, indeed, migrant crisis. The the number of people arriving in Lib in uh, in uh, in Italy has decreased 95 percent compared to 2015. Well, now, Ms. To the Commission numbers figures. Ms. So Gomes. there is no real uh, uh, migration crisis, and it's the fact that European governments don't counter the narrative, the nasty narrative of right wing governments such right. as the Salvini government that explains okay. this this shame. Well, now, uh, th that may be what voters want, but what I want to know from you is, is there any possibility of your mustering some kind of majority in the European Parliament to roll this back, or is it just a rubber stamp? Look, in the European Parliament, we have confronted numerous times the Commission and Member States, uh, the Council, with, indeed, the, this, this, uh, this uh, rhetoric that doesn't match the reality. But they keep denying it because they are afraid to counter the narrative. Even mainstream governments go after this nasty narrative of extreme right wing, pretending there is a major migration uh, crisis and that uh, we are being invaded by foreigners. That's not true. And indeed they are with their policy, the, uh, conniving, uh, actively conniving with a policy that indeed uh, kills people, that indeed is about exposing people to torture, to, to, to this human trafficking, by not opening safe and legal ways, controlled ways, we are actually feeding the mafias that right. are running this trafficking, this human trafficking.